Hey, hi. <laughs> this is a Q&A video. If you're not here for that, I get it. Check the first link in the description for a link to a tutorial creating this really cool retro rad 80s low poly landscape. Check the second link in the description for my most recent free preset for DaVinci Resolve. Some really cool stuff going on there. And also check the third link for just my intro to Fusion playlist. Especially if you're new to the channel, there's a lot of cool foundational stuff there. But if you want to stick around and learn a little bit more about me or this channel, that's cool too. I put out a video asking for questions. Lots of people left questions. Now I'm going to answer them. That's how it works. First from Vojta, how did you get the idea to start doing all of this? So in 2020, I was working with a company in the online education space, specifically for streamers. I was just doing video editing for them, but I wanted to understand the broader space better. I'd been watching streamers for a little bit. Like I jumped in in 2017 with that wave. I've been deep in YouTube since I was in high school and, and it got much bigger. And so I was toying with the idea of just like occasionally going live or having my hand at the streaming game. And as I started watching and reading and learning more just about like the content creator landscape, I realized that a YouTube channel I thought would just fit me a lot better. I thought um, with my video editing background, I would have a lot to give through individual videos. And at that time, I was also actively helping out a lot of people in that community. Um, so slowly, like the things that I would help individual people with, I would just turn those into their own video. And I decided to take it seriously pretty quickly and like uh, commit to like at least one video a week pretty early on. And then that just sort of like compounded and grew and I kept doing it. <laughs> Next from CGOB, when did you start using DaVinci Resolve? Why did you use DaVinci Resolve? Was it because it was free? Why not Premiere Pro or After Effects? So I first learned to edit video really in high school. We had an elective video editing course and I first learned on Final Cut 7. Really enjoyed it. It was great. At that time, I started messing around with um, that early version of motion as well. And especially like way back then motion, it was like very, very limited. I was looking around online, poking around, and quickly saw like, hey, what you want is After Effects. Um, so I talked my teacher into getting like a Creative Cloud license. So that's when I also started doing stuff in Premiere. Um, but really, it was always like learning After Effects along with Premiere, even like through college and then doing some stuff after. So I had been in Premiere and After Effects in some regard for like about or just about like 10 years before I jumped over to Resolve. And the big pull for me, like a lot of people, was the color tools. Um, I'm not a colorist and I didn't get so, so deep into color in that move, but very quickly the place where I was working doing video stuff, we were having more and more issues with Premiere. And so like we, we shifted, I was also the primary video editor. So it was a little easier to like make big decisions. And I was really happy with just like the core functionality as well. And then I jumped immediately into Fusion. Like that was really exciting learning all that stuff. So my attention definitely shifted a bit away from uh, really going deep in color to deep in Fusion. And I think, I think it's been going good. Next from Rick, how did you market your channel at the beginning? Did you post it somewhere? Just comment on bigger creators or did you do nothing and let nature take its course? This is a video I really wanted to make um, like early on and I never did. I wanted to make a video specifically how I used uh, Twitter early on. I think it might have been a bit much for some people, especially if people were like seeing my responses, but I went pretty heavy on Twitter, especially in the situation I was in where I was making tutorial content. The search functionality on Twitter is pretty incredible. And following each of those early videos, I would just like regularly search for anyone talking about DaVinci Resolve, anyone having questions, anyone thinking about trying it out. And I would say like, hey, I'm in Resolve. I like it. I like these things. I recently put out this video talking about this one specific feature or whatever, check it out. And it wouldn't always be just blasting it everywhere. There was a bit of that, maybe too much. There was also just being more active in those uh, conversations as well. Right after I put out my first uh, big free pack of presets and templates, I was talking on Twitter and in one of those conversations uh, on Twitter, that's when I first connected with Epos Vox and started talking more there and eventually like, got on his channel, which was like a big spike in the beginning. So like you can be very like, piecemeal tactical about like spreading your stuff on Twitter. But I think absolutely the best thing about Twitter is like the potential for like more meaningful connection and just like being a person and being helpful and not trying to be like a content bot. I occasionally posted it in some relevant subreddits, but I, I'm not a big Reddit user in general. So I was never like going crazy into that. Occasionally I haven't done it in a while but like Reddit was, was okay. I was in some Facebook groups earlier that like w were good, but I, again, I never like went 
when really hamming those. Shaney asked, do you have any recommendations for beginners wanting to do some videos on YouTube? Um, doing some videos, obviously very broad. I will say if you have no background in like video production, then like absolutely do whatever. I would say do what like excites you, what gets you interested, what like keeps you interested in producing a project. But if you're still like coming to terms with how to like actually put a video together, then just like just do work, just go through those reps. After that, depending on the state of your channel, like maybe uh, you wanna keep everything one please, maybe you wanna branch off and start from scratch. But as much as you can have an entire channel dedicated to like one big idea and then each individual video underneath that is just again like one specific idea, a specific idea all relating back to that main idea. I recently put on Twitter that like my main YouTube advice is just to try to help people. <laughs> That's been my approach. I don't have a big entertainment channel. I'm just trying to like help people do the stuff I'm doing. There are so many different ways to try to do YouTube, but this is, this is the route I'm doing. So recommendations, just get good at putting videos together um, and then really, really like focus on your idea. Because I knew I had a little nugget of an idea and then especially when I started getting into like more fusion and preset -y stuff, I knew I knew I had a okay, okay core idea and I think that'll only grow. Vashinator asked a question that like went back to something I had talked to him earlier about, but talking about the landscape for tutorials on YouTube and how, but unless you find like the right idea and the right framing to like get your video way up in that ranking for like big topics people are searching for, which is which is hard, you have to find interesting ways to package your ideas. Obviously I do a lot of free stuff, which is a big pull, but I think I would have a rougher time if each video was just looking at one specific feature and be like, okay, here is the follower modifier in the Fusion page. Like, what is that? unless I do like fast, simple text animation. That's like something people actually know. Like you title and thumbnail for like curiosity people say, but also especially if you wanna be in the search game at all, like people don't know the proper name of things they're searching for. So you need to go where, where the people are going. And then there's the matter of like what actually gets views, which is tougher. I think there are plenty of things that I could just talk about in a video that would do much better than like real practical, helpful tutorials, which is kind of a bummer, but I like, need to keep doing those tutorials as well because like they're they are valuable i know they help tons of people unbound arts and crafts asks do you plan your videos in advance or do you go with the youtube flow a lot of my videos are interesting in that um like i don't script my videos which I, we might get to later as well but a lot of things whether it's walking through a preset or a complicated in-depth tutorial even if i'm doing a very complicated tutorial like i did for the uh, thor love and thunder titles something like that you have to go through the entire process beforehand uh, to make the sample. So you learn a lot in that process. You iron out a lot of the issues. So then even though I am rebuilding it from scratch while I'm recording, I know where I'm going. And even my style is still very casual and I like correct myself in videos all the time. I think my style is very much like if I was just like sitting next to someone walking through that. I don't think people need those tutorials to be like so hyper polished or presentationally <laughs> presentationy like the information is there and it's not crazy boring i think that's progress church 1x1 how important are thumbnails in your opinion do you do them yourself or outsource them what are the most painless ways to learn the skill to do them thumbnails crazy important and man definitely something i'm not great at i think my thumbnails have mostly been serviceable and I think they've, they've gotten better as I've learned things for sure. I do them all myself. I make all of them in Resolve. I have the Affinity Suite and that's what I did a lot of my early thumbnails in. But even when I was still in After Effects, I would do a lot of like photo editing in After Effects just, just because that's what I was most comfortable with. And it's really easy to save an image out of Fusion and I know all the tools for specific looks. Text is really nice. I can very easily bring in like past specific like texts or colors or all this other stuff. I have stuff saved in Power. I have stuff to save and I have stuff saved in power bins for easy reference. So as much as like the process of manually putting them together as as frictionless as you can make that so you can actually focus on, you know, like layout and some of the designy aspects and like how much you want to lean into like putting yourself in the thumbnail off supposed to different stuff. I'm not I think my thumbnails are all right. <laughs> Mike asks after 2 years, do you still enjoy doing it? Enjoy isn't fun, find some kind of validation or satisfaction, etc. Yeah, it's super fun. Again, I think I'm in a really exciting little niche. Resolve is absolutely getting larger, but it's still fairly contained. And then like fusion in that, and then like presets inside of that. There aren't too many people 
doing what I'm doing and at like the kind of scale I've done it at and how much like I've, I don't know, I've given away a lot of free stuff. And really like I started a channel and I keep doing the channel. Like I want to help people and like I know I'm helping people. So that's like super validating. And then on top of that, like all the people I've met, like the extra opportunities, like I'm, if you don't know, I'm going to ResolveCon on October 1st and second, it's with Casey Ferris and a bunch of other amazing like Resolve YouTubers and even like professionals working in the field. And that's just because of the stuff I'm doing here. Rad, yeah, it's fun. Uh, one of Eddie's questions, what is needed to grow your channel within two years? I'll toss up um, a graphic here of my um, like total subscribers over that time. Ooh, and then I'll show uh, this other graph I recently found of uh, views by traffic source. And you can see how important search has been for my channel. Search is 25% of the traffic on YouTube, which like, yeah, isn't the majority, but YouTube is also still the second largest search engine. Even my videos that have done well outside of search haven't blown up. I've never gone viral. And the big successes on my channel are because of that long-term success in search. That's slowly shifting as I'm having a few um, that are like, riding little waves and brows, but like the, the big guys, the big guys are there because of search. One video I love to talk about, um, I believe it was the sixth video I made and it was just how to make shaky text. It's like a pretty basic effect, but even outside of Resolve, sort of like I talked about being specific earlier, there were some videos about how to use like the like wiggle parameter in After Effects or how to use like specific modifiers or how to like use tools. But when I just searched like how to make shaky text, which I saw through like SEO research was something people were searching for. Uh, there was just like an opening right at the top where I knew like I could probably sit. And I sat there for a while and that single video kept my channel alive for a long time. I also think search and specifically tutorial videos in search, uh, definitely a bit of a double-edged sword because if someone is searching for a specific answer and you have a specific answer, then they will get that answer and leave very happy, but they will leave and never come back to you. But at the same time, um, I think there is a uh, level of like intent, sort of a buy-in whenever people like search and then choose to click on your video. Like they are looking for a very specific thing. And if you can deliver and can deliver with a bit of a promise of um, like added value, like, oh, I do this, but also like, this is what I do on my channel. If, if this was valuable, think about like how much more you could get, how much more you could learn. Um, then I think that can be a little bit stronger of a pull. I hit 20,000 subscribers shortly after uh, 1 million total channel views. And like Roberto Blake talked about like the 1% rule where like a healthy rule of thumb is if you want 10,000 subscribers, you should expect to have to get uh, close to like a million views for 1% of them to subscribe to get 10,000 subscribers. So I feel great about my sub count uh, for the views I received. And I believe that is largely like because of that intentionality. People have to decide to click on a video. Um, and then I believe I have that extra promise of value. So like it's, it's easier for some of them to stick around. And then I've also made over 130 videos. Like I haven't stopped, which is a big deal. And I think that helps anyone finding a previous video they like. Um, if they see like I'm still active, that's that's a really big deal. Uh, a video from Ken. Ken's been around a little while. Uh, how do you research topics and do how do you organize upcoming in process and release content? Um, I've never run out of ideas for videos. I always have a list I'm working from and adding to. I don't do some things I probably should do. Like I don't batch content at all. Usually if I have an idea, um, like I'll do the work to make sure like it's viable as a video and then like I'll film it, I'll make it and I will almost always immediately release it. And as for topics, I almost exclusively uh, create the video um, that I am most excited about next. That's really useful with motivation. Um, especially when I'm exploring like new things in Resolve and Fusion. If something is exciting, that's what I chase. Craving Canada asks, uh, where do you see your YouTube journey taking you? Quickly, I have no idea, um, but I would like it to keep taking. <laughs> it's very exciting. I'm having uh, cool opportunities. It's growing. It feels really healthy. I don't have any big plans. Like I do have like my business that YouTube is a part of and like I'm selling those presets. I want to expand those options a whole lot. I want to provide lots of value for my channel members. But right now the priority is just to not quit and keep going. And then he has a second question. Have you ever considered using new YouTube for any reasons other than Da Vinci, like vlogs or something? I've loved YouTube for a long time, but I only started my own channel 
um, when I knew it wouldn't super be about me. <laughs> I knew I could just talk about Resolve and editing and help people. I think it, I think it would be a little hard for me to pivot into like more me or personal focused stuff. Um, I have an upcoming video that will be on this channel, but it's kind of um, like video essay. -y. It's more uh, it's interesting. Stick around. It's about like creator economy stuff um, and like how to make money online. It'll be cool. It's a little different. And from Tenmar, also been around for a while. I had to use programs like Notion, or templates and checklists, and any advice on writing a script. Um, so I do use Notion. I like Notion. Um, I have these organized on a Notion doc. I don't go ham in Notion largely. It's just like a place to like dump ideas. And like I said, I don't script. Um, the few things I have scripted, um, like my natural writing voice is fairly conversational. Um, so. Uh, I don't have much ed advice. Um, I think my big advice for script would be like similar to editing video in general, just like uh, cut wherever you can. Like you probably don't need nearly as much as you're saying. Fusion Thunder asks, what's your favorite type of video to edit? Um, I think based on like pure enjoyment, I've done it a few times, it's very cool. If I could film and edit anything, I would do live acoustic on location music videos or really performance videos. I did this once, I took a group I was with out into the middle of the woods. I had uh, uh, the Zoom H6, so all battery powered and using like real studio mics out in the middle of the woods doing this like live acoustic performance. We had a drummer on Cajon with a click track in his ear so we could sync everything up. And it was just like a really cool intersection of like the music stuff I really like and then that video production and it felt kind of scrappy. It had a really cool vibe. And then like I could also get into the like uh, sort of light audio mixing side as well. I'm not an audio engineer at all. I think I might be able to scrape by with like entry like maybe demo level stuff. It's fun, That's I, I enjoy it. And then like I love motion graphics stuff in general. I'd love to do like more little stuff like that. And then from Andrew, I've already answered some of his other questions, but he also asked, what is your biggest goal? I don't know about biggest goals. Like I said, the, the big goal now is to don't stop and to keep going um, and get videos out, get more videos out and just see what happens. Um, I care a lot about like my minimum view floor as well and like recurring views. So really my goals are to make more videos that get views over time. And like I always care about like that next big like sub milestone or something, but like it's, I don't know, subscribers are vanity metrics, it's tough. But each time I get like a new like uh, best month in like views or watch time, that's super exciting. I would love to, I don't have a great idea right now. I would love to think a little bit bigger about how to like help more people get into video editing. Um, I would love to get involved with like different student groups. Uh, I don't know. I've got lots of stuff floating around, but not too many like goals. My goal is to keep doing this, try my hardest, um, try to make the best stuff I can, and help the most people. And Andrew says, I think most people underestimate how valuable your content is. One day they may look back and realize they shouldn't have taken some of it for granted. There are a small amount of people on YouTube in each niche and category giving away free game tutorials or how to's to millions of people. I appreciate your content and I hope you don't give up. I guarantee we'll look back another two years from now and you'll have reached an even greater level than where you are now in terms of reach. So many people are switching to DaVinci Resolve and I'm sure they will run into your channel. It's weird that wasn't really a question. Uh, thanks, I'll see you next time.